Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by GTE, the official telecommunications consultant to the NCAA. And by Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Not sure how comfortable Oklahoma State is tonight. Trailing 17 to 6 with 618 to play in the ballgame. And they have it. The rain is still coming down. And the wind is blowing. Oklahoma State going against the wind. Lindsay to Simmons. Keeping it on the ground. Does that surprise you, Artie? Well, I, I don't know. I, yes, it does a little bit because you'd think you'd want to take a couple stabs. But, again, Tony Lindsay's been a little cold tonight. Mm -hmm. So maybe Coach Simmons and uh, Ron Calcagni, the offensive coordinator, felt, hey, we're not getting anywhere throwing the football, so let's keep handing the ball off. Simmons has almost 100 yards. You know, he's not going to fumble, so maybe they can get up and pop a long run on him. But, yes, it did surprise me a little bit. I think you'll see a pass here, though. Sean Love in the slot. Lindsey will go from the shotgun with 5.40 to play. Looks into the flat. Pass is tipped. Incomplete. Lonnie Madison got the hand on it. It's time for a Dr. Pepper game break, and we again take you back to Stanford at UCLA. There was 8.05 left in the fourth quarter when Deshaun Foster runs it in from the eight-yard line. That gave UCLA the 28-24 lead over Stanford, and that is now a final. UCLA has won it 28-24. They dodged a bullet, and the groans have come up from Manhattan, Kansas. Courageous effort, though, by the Stanford Cardinal, who are having a very, very difficult year. Third down and five. Akins is the fullback. Lindsey straight drop. Pass tipped incomplete. Almost intercepted. Michael Jamison, the sophomore from Colleen, Texas, in that strong safety spot, got a hand on it. And Oklahoma State is now 0 for 11 on third down opportunities. This time, Texas A&M is only going to rush three guys, and they're going to cover eight behind them. It's their nickel defense, but they're only rushing three defenders. You see eight guys drop into coverage, and there's really nowhere to throw the ball against a zone defense like that. And OSU will be forced to punt on fourth and five. Elder from his own 15. Taylor waits for it. Watches it sail over his head as he calls the fair catch. And Elder has done a nice job for the Cowboys tonight. 518 to play, a 51-yard kick. Now I wonder how much hidden yardage has taken place tonight. When the ball bounces like that and rolls, it's considered hidden yardage. It counts on the punt. But it just seems to me, Ron, like there's a lot of rolling of the football tonight because of the wind and the weather. I think it's been hard for the, the return guy to judge the football. You know, we talked earlier how Jamal Fobbs did not have a carry versus Oklahoma. They wanted right. to get the tail back the ball more. He only has one carry tonight. Right. And you know what? He hasn't been playing much tailback. And I don't know if he's injured or they're thinking of other things to utilize him in, but he hasn't been in the tailback back spot very much. Well, time is on AM's side right now. On first and ten, they keep it on the ground. A big hit, fumble, but AM will retain possession. Toombs got nailed, and we have a penalty flag thrown. You know, A&M has put the ball on the ground a great deal tonight, but Oklahoma State, it hasn't popped their way. The ball has either gone out of bounds or they missed recovering a fumble. That's just bad luck right there, and you can see the look on the coaches on the sidelines. Why couldn't it stay in bounds? And it's a holding call against A&M. That's the fifth fumble for Texas A&M, but they haven't lost any. And, you know, Bob Simmons was saying, we asked him about the difference between last year's team and this year. He said, you know, last year, guys would fumble. It bounced right up to us. Yeah, well, sometimes the ball bounce, bounces your way, and they're coaching the same way, and they're talking about turnovers the same, but sometimes it just doesn't bounce your way. And obviously tonight, it has not been bouncing right. their way. But, I, you know, I'm surprised because A&M doesn't turn the ball over. They don't throw interceptions. I think they have four collectively as a quarterback group this entire year, and they haven't fumbled the ball very much. But tonight, for whatever reason, maybe it's younger backs carrying uh -huh. the ball and not used to, to being hit, but the ball has been bouncing around too much. First down and 18. They'll keep it on the ground. Not much running room for Toombs. 
put Metcalf and Dwayne Levels on the stop. You gotta like a true freshman that has a Superman tattoo and wears a Superman T-shirt. <laughs> and now A&M, though, if they keep winning, they're gonna have a bullseye on their chest because everybody's gonna be after them. Well, that's the price you pay when you're good and you beat people like Nebraska. Everybody's gonna be start gearing, start gearing for you, and you become everybody's big game. Crowd of over 47,000 on hand for homecoming. Few of them are heading to the exits. There's Oklahoma State with four and a half to play, and yeah, that's a great stash. The Sheik is sticking around on second and 16. Rose, the big hit. Oklahoma State trying to strip it. Ricky Thompson comes up with the first hit. Nalls on the second. Let's send it down to Eric Clemens for the Burger King game summary. Eric? Well, Texas A&M's wrecking crew has kept Oklahoma State really off balance a bit. And Toombs being a workhorse on offense. Lindsey, you see his numbers. Real erratic for the night. McCown before the injury, 119 yards and a touchdown. And the total yards, you can see a huge advantage for Texas A&M. Again, the wrecking crew, the big story in this one, keeping that Oklahoma State offense off balance, guys. You know, Eric, though, as Lindsey goes, so does this Oklahoma State offense. And when he's ineffective, you get numbers like that. 421 to play. And OSU can do nothing but watch A&M run the football and watch the clock go down. When Texas A&M gets into situations like this where they have to run the football, they always do it with their two tight end offense, Campbell and Spiller, because they're excellent athletes and they get their best athletes on the field. R.C. Slocum is a defensive-minded head football coach, and he knows what it is to keep play keep away from a defense, and he coaches it, and his coaches do a good job of emphasizing it because they're not a high-scoring offense, and when he Get a lead, you want to be able to keep it. Still three and a half to play. Leckler will kick it away. Richardson on his own 37. A driving kick again by Leckler. Richardson from his 23. Gets away from the first wave, will not get away from the second. Boy, R.W. McCorders last year, the cornerback, now in the NFL, was a big kick returner this year. They need somebody like that. Just a reminder, coming up next, the F1 championship comes to an end. Hakkinen and Schumacher in the Grand Prix of Japan from Suzuki, Japan. That'll be coming up next right here on Fox Sports Net. Oklahoma State already only 47 yards in the second half. Not enough, obviously, and the conversion rate on third down has been down. But, you know, you bring up a great point about McQuarters, but also on defense. Kevin Williams was a starting corner that was taken in the third round. McQuarters goes to the 49ers in the first round, so you lose two quality corners and, like you said, a great kick return guy. Lindsey's pass is complete to Grissom. Skips out of bounds, maybe got a yard and a half, maybe two. But when Oklahoma State looks at the stats, they'll look at, obviously, the ineffective offense, but I think they'll also look at third down conversions 0 for 11. Right. No chance. I mean, no. you know, that's, that's your, quote, critical downs in a game. And, you know, last week against a very good University of Oklahoma defense, they came out in the second half and scored in, like, six out of seven possessions in the second half. And Bob Simmons told us he gave them a, what he called a pep talk at halftime. <laughs> But unfortunately for him tonight, it's not going as well in the second half. Second and nine on a draw. Lindsey keeps it, slips, gets up to the 42-yard line. Depending on the spot, should be short of the first down. Pickup of seven. No huddle offense now for the Cowboys. Fobbs is the tailback on third down and a yard. And Fobbs is going to lose two, only his second carry of the game. You know, it's hard for a tailback to come in after you haven't carried the ball all day and try to make the tough yards because you're not into a rhythm. I believe in the rhythm of a tailback. You're used to getting hit. You're used to seeing the holes open up, playing off your blocks up front. Now it sets up a fourth down and one, and this is the entire game. And you got to go for it, obviously, Absolutely. here. There's, this is not even a question what to do. Lindsey, plenty of time to snap it. The option. 
And that's probably going to do it for the Cowboys, barring a miracle. Dat Wynn, who became the all-time tackling leader in A&M history, came up with a stop. Well, he read it perfectly, and, you know, you got to believe he was coached all week to say, hey, when the option comes, look for Lindsey to keep the ball. You're going to see Wynn here at the top of your screen. He just runs underneath the block and gets up the field and makes the play. Josh Lynn, number 73, anticipated him coming to the outside, but Wynn came underneath. But you know what also, Artie? Did you see who really forced him inside? Warwick Holden. Yes. I tell you, those two guys work in a great tandem together. You know, this is a linebacker system, though. You know, the it's at you know this is an advantageous system for linebackers to play well in and obviously they do play well in it. A&M with 100 yards more offense in the second half than Oklahoma State. And they're adding to it. Tombs again to the cries of Tombs. He said when his family first heard everybody saying it, they thought they were booing him. <laughs> I know. Well, wait till next week at Texas a yeah. and when he's got a lot of his fans, you know, 60,000 people in the stands doing it for him. Here he's only got about, what, 5,000, 6,000 yeah, Aggie fans here for him. You know, this. I think this is a good example, though, tonight of the depth and the quality of teams in the Big 12. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of really good football teams because – Oklahoma State dismantled a very good Mississippi State team earlier in the year. And Oklahoma State's bowl hopes are now tenuous at best. Toombs inside the 30, a first down. Oklahoma State has Texas, Southwestern Louisiana, and Baylor left on their schedule. And if they have any hope of getting to a bowl, they got to win all three in order to get the necessary six wins in Division 1A. Well, that one next week is going to be very difficult because obviously Texas is back. Huge win today against Nebraska, and they're going to be sky high. Toombs over 100 yards rushing the football on 21 carries. Well, the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer for college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Tonight's game produced by Mike Helling, directed by Ken Fouts, and the vice president of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. And a special thanks to Larry Rogers for keeping our camera people dry. And it was a tough setup when it was raining yesterday. And camera guys and everybody else, we do appreciate it. And keeping us dry, too. That's right. And keeping us elevated. They built us a platform up here so we could see. It's too short. That's I know. That's <laughs> Spiller in motion. Toombs adds to his total. He had 103. Give him about five more. 108 yards and put your helmet back on. I think he's a great candidate to be the offensive rookie or freshman of the year in the Big 12. He's doing it at the right time, end of the year. End of the year, and, you know, they'll probably get him into the championship game, and everybody in the country will have a chance to see him like we're seeing tonight because this guy has got a just a wonderful future at Texas A&M. But, you know, it's football today. you got to get oh. something out of your freshmen because you, only, you don't have enough players anymore on scholarship with the 85 scholarship limit. Final 10 seconds as A&M will pad their Southern Division lead as they look forward to the showdown November 27th with the Longhorns of Texas as R.C. Slocum's team wins their eighth consecutive game. And they do it in fine fashion. Good defense, just enough offense. 17 to 6 is our final. That's a good win, though, because uh, R.C. was a little nervous about this ball game. Well, you know, you come in here, you, they, they, Oklahoma State played A&M toe-to-toe -to -toe last year. You've seen Oklahoma State have a wonderful game against Mississippi and Nebraska earlier in the year. So you are nervous because you come in and you say, hey, how is my football team going to react? And Eric Clemens is on the sideline with Brandon Stewart. Eric? All right, guys. Brandon Stewart, uh, you're pressed into duty. Of course, Randy McCown separates his shoulder. And on your first play, talk about the hookup for the touchdown. Well, first of all, it's a, you know, it's a tragedy anytime somebody gets hurt, especially someone in your position. You know how, much, how hard you work every, every day and week in and week out to get to play and then to get taken out in just one play, you know. But that, uh, you know, that's one thing you have to be ready for is anytime you're just one snap away. So I went in, and they were in man coverage. We had a... A, a nice play call versus man coverage and just worked out. Made a good throw and a, a great catch. They played you really tough early on. Did you guys at ever, ever at any point feel a lot of concern that you could come back and, and take charge of this game as you did? 
I think so. Once we figured out what they were trying to do defensively and uh, make some adjustments at halftime, I think we were able to come back uh, and use those adjustments to, to move the ball better down the field and kind of keep the ball in our position more. Your defense, I mean, they call them the wrecking crew, and they really kept the uh, offense of Oklahoma State really off balance today. Uh, is that a typical thing that's going on with these eight victories in a row now with your team, the defense getting better and better? Uh, people always say uh, good defense wins championships, and I think that's kind of playing itself out right now because it seems like every time we turn the ball back over, punt it, uh, you know, or, or miss it on fourth down, it seems like the defense goes out there and just gets us the ball right back, and that, that helps you a lot to be successful when you can have that many plays in the game. All right, look ahead to next week for us. You have a big home game, and then you got three more left in the season. Talk about that a little bit and what this team looks forward to from here on out. Well, uh, you know, right now we just want to enjoy this win. Then we'll go back, practice tomorrow, uh, like we always do. And we've done a good job of going back each week and getting focused. And I think we'll be able to do that tomorrow. And it's always fun to come back home and play. You never take a, a win on the road for advantage, and that's what we got today. So it's something we can be happy with, but we got to look forward to the next one. Okay, good enough. Thank you very much, Brandon Stewart. Winning quarterback in a relief role here tonight. R.C. Slocum standing by and uh, we'll talk to him now for a second as well. R.C., congratulations. You got some big plays from places. Well, maybe you might not have expected them. First, talk about it a little bit. Well, it was a great team victory. We, we Brandon Stewart came in. Uh, Randy was injured. He came in, did a great job. I thought uh, Jamar Toombs, a freshman, really filled in. We got Sir pulled it, re-pulled his muscle. Dante Hall was hurt early in the ball game. So it's a team thing. Our special teams play great. Uh, Chris Taylor made the big play on the kickoff return. Our defense played very solidly all night. So just a great team victory. I'm really proud to come up here into a, a tough place against a good football team and win this game. Speaking of your defense, uh, that win, Holdman, those linebackers, everybody really kept Oklahoma State off balance. I think they were 0 for the night on third down situation. I thought it was uh, our defensive coaches did a great job of the game plan. Mike Hankwitz uh, called a great, uh, great game. Uh, the play Warwick made down here, the interception, I thought was really a, a big time football play. And uh, that does what he does every week. Just I saw him all over the field. You've got a very young squad out here. Do you feel that the, the, this squad is at the peak of confidence right now? You're getting hot and playing well and gelling at the time you should be? I think this team has made steady progress throughout the year. And the thing that's, that's been so rewarding to us and encouraging, it's a team. We've had a lot of guys play. We don't, we don't really have any real stars other than you. Uh, that win is certainly a big name player. But other than that, just a bunch of guys playing football. They're playing very well together. All right. Now, listen, talk to me a little bit about the injury update. Of course, you had uh, your running back go out and also quarterback uh, Randy McCown go out as well. What does their status look like for the weeks ahead? If you can even talk about that at this point. Uh, Randy, they told me the early diagnosis is that he has a one degree uh, shoulder sprain. Uh, could, hopefully he'll be ready to go next week, but you never know. Uh, being able to go and being able to perform are two different things. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma next week, uh, looking ahead to that one? Oklahoma is a team that uh, I've seen a little bit of tape on them. They're a talented team. Uh, I understand they won today, and uh, they'll come to our place and it'll be a heck of a contest. So every week in the Big 12 Conference, you, you got your work cut out for you every week. Okay, Coach, no scary surprises for you on this Halloween. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of it. Okay. Enjoy the victory. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. All right, let's send you back upstairs to Ron and Artie for more. Guys? Thank you very much, Eric Clemens. Good job. R.C. Slocum has to be happy. He gets away with a win. He said he appreciates every win he gets. And he got a good one tonight. 17-6 to is our final. As Brandon Stewart steps in in a relief roll and hits Taylor for the touchdown. And that sealed the victory.